I'd like to introduce you to the Omo Valley region located in southwest Ethiopia. The lack of roads, difficult terrain, and a harsh climate has resulted in relative isolation for many of the native tribal groups who live here. Because of this, cultures have remained separated and the lack of intermingling has created a unique part of the world. Oftentimes, tribal people are looked at as being unsophisticated, but they are anything but. With a different value system than Western cultures, they can survive great distances with little water, farm scrubland successfully, and have flourished under adverse conditions. These are the people of the Omo Valley. The Dasanich tribe are a semi-nomadic group numbering approximately 50,000. They live along the banks of the Omo River and their survival is intimately linked to the forces of nature and the seasonal flooding of the Omo River. Their clans stretch across Sudan, Kenya, and southern Ethiopia. The Dasanich live in a semi-arid environment where the Omo River Delta enters Lake Turkana. Dasanich means people of the Delta. They survive in this environment by cultivating crops when the rain arrives and the Omo River floods. They also manage their cattle herds well, slaughtering the older ones in the dry season when grazing is limited and the meat is most needed. Although one of the poorer tribes, they love to sing and are very welcoming. In order to reach these villages, we needed to cross the Omo River by kneeling in tree trunk canoes, ignoring the fact that the river was filled with crocodiles. Once we crossed the river, there were several villages within walking distance. Arriving at sunset, we walked into a village with the most beautiful natural light you could ever want. Just imagine the amber-colored setting sun reflecting off jet black complexions, bright white teeth, thick red beads around every neck and lean bodies glistening with cocoa butter dressed in traditional goatskins. The Dasanich are open to the inclusion of other immigrants who are willing to abide by Dasanich customs and values. Any person can be admitted into the Dasanich, but with one condition, both men and women must be circumcised. Dasanich housing is typically a five foot high dome which is covered in either goatskin or corrugated metal. The following day, we traveled to another Dasanich village to see a special event, and like something from another world, we entered to find a large group of men and women dancing in a circle. The biggest event in a man's life is called Dimi, and its purpose is to celebrate and bless his daughter for fertility and future marriage. After a man has gone through the Dimi ceremony, he will become an elder in the village. Our young local guide was related to the honoree, and therefore we had been invited. The men wore tall, black wig hats with their bodies painted yellow and covered in leopard skins. Multiple silver and copper bracelet bangles were worn on both arms. Brushed horsehair tails were tied to their elbows. Their lower bodies were covered with leather skirts and beaded belts. The women had yellow paint splattered on their bodies in artistic designs. The Hammer make their home in Turmi. No other tribe has hair like theirs, a sophisticated and time-consuming process of mixing butter and ochre-colored soil into braided ringlets. The hair will remain this way for many months, and often the treatment will spill onto the face where it will remain their skin dyed red. They are a picture of health with beautiful skin and teeth. Their goatskin skirts are elaborately designed with collars of white seashells, leaving one shoulder bare. The front of the skirt is patterned with tiny beads in tight geometric formations in yellow, blue, red, and white. Hammer men wear a simple checkered cloth around their hips tied with a bullet holder belt, which is sometimes used to keep bullets, but also tobacco and food. Attentive to their appearance, the hammer are masters of decorative body painting, jewelry, and hair design. Some hammer men stand out with original hairstyles that can include feathers or even some parts of an animal they have killed. The hammer people are the most prevalent minority tribe in the lower Omo Valley. Pastoral and semi-nomadic, they are known for both their skill as warriors as well as their friendly demeanor with strangers. 
For hammer boys to become men, a bull jumping ceremony is held. The Maz, who are a group of recently initiated men who have successfully completed the bull jumping ceremony, will assist him in preparing. One of their early tasks involves whipping the young novice's female relatives using long reeds. The girls beg to be whipped since this is the way they can demonstrate the strength of their devotion to the boy. This results in bleeding, deep wounds, and permanent scarring. These scars are a symbol of great pride and are openly displayed on the bare backs of women to show their tolerance for pain and endurance. The boy must then jump between the backs of 30 cattle four complete times without falling in order to pass from childhood into manhood while completely naked as he was at the moment of his birth. To fall is considered bad luck. Before the ceremony begins, wild dancing, horn blowing, and chanting takes place among the cattle. Scars on a hammer man's chest and shoulders indicate that he is either a killer of rival tribesmen or of dangerous animals, such as a lion or leopard. The hammer have a marital tradition when a bride is chosen from another hammer clan. Immediately after the wedding, the woman must be sequestered for three months and eat nothing but blood, milk, and butter to make herself as fat as possible, a sign to her family that she is being well taken care of. The Mercy ethnic group inhabits southwestern Ethiopia surrounded by mountains between the Omo River and its tributary, the Mago. It is one of the most isolated regions of Ethiopia. Their children are sometimes painted with white chalk, which may be dotted or striped on the face and body. This is not done for tourists. With no way to contact the tribes and long distances to reach them, arrival at a village is always unexpected. The Mercy tribe are remnants of a very ancient layer of Hamitic people pushed west and north across the Omo River by successive waves of invasion from the east. A great many Mercy display the stumps of severed limbs and the blemishes of old wounds. They do so with pride for such injuries bear witness to the dastardly attacks that they have survived and the splendid raids in which they have participated. The size of the tribe is estimated at between 5,000 to 8,300 people. The Mercy use white chalk mixed with water for body painting. Although they are mainly a pastoral people, the Mercy have only one head of cattle per person and considerably fewer goats and sheep. They have no more than 20% of the stock they would need in order to survive entirely on a diet of milk, blood, and meat depend on cultivation for the remainder of their needs, including sorghum, maize, and cowpeas. The Mercy are considered some of the most feared warriors in the Omo Valley. Donga stick fighting is a martial art that is an important part in the life of men. The stick fights are wild and fierce, for this is the time for men to prove their bravery in front of women. The day before the fighting begins, the men drink a special mixture made from bark then force themselves to vomit with the belief that it will rid the body of impurities. Before fighting, they will stop to wash themselves in the river, then decorate their bodies with white clay. To show their courage, they will fight completely naked. Between the ages of 15 or 16 and to beautify themselves for marriage, most young Mercy girls have their lower lip cut by her mother or by another woman in her settlement. The cut is held open by a wooden plug until it heals then stretched to allow the insertion of a clay lip plate, which is gradually increased in size over one year. The larger the plate, the more beautiful the woman is, and therefore the higher the price will be required to be given to her family when she was given away as a bride. A large lip plate will bring 50 head of cattle. Sometimes the plates can reach up to 16 inches in diameter. Head adornments for the Mercy can also be made from just about anything they find including cartridge casings, horns of animals, or feathers. Jewelry can consist of colorful necklaces, chunky metal armlets, shiny nails, or keys appended to skirts, multiple earrings, as well as the caps of beer bottles. The Abori tribe is a small tribe that lives in the southwest region of the Omo Valley. They perform many ritualistic dances 
while singing in the belief that this will drive away negativity and bring good fortune to the tribe. They are pastoralists whose wealth is measured by the number of cattle they own. The women cover their heads with a black cloth and are known to wear very colorful necklaces and earrings. Shaved heads covered with black scarves combined with multiple ankle bracelets signifies that females are not married. In order to marry, a man will need to give at least 30 cattle to the bride's family. The Karo have a population of about 1 to 2,000 people, making them the smallest ethnic tribe in Ethiopia, and because of their small size, susceptible to cattle raids by their neighbors. The Karo dwell along the banks of the Omo River and largely rely on the river's annual flood for sustenance, practicing flood retreat cultivation growing sorghum, maize, and beans. They also fish and breed cattle and goats. Surrounded by more powerful and wealthier tribes, they have created a complex social hierarchy to thwart intermarriage and keep their lineages pure. The Karo are closely related to the Hammer tribe who speak virtually identical languages. These two tribes are of the same ancestries and some of their cultural practices allude to a rich cultural history together, but nevertheless, there is conflict between them. The Karo are undeniably artistic by nature. Among other things, they are known for their alluring and intricate body and face painting. They decorate their bodies with locally found white chalk, yellow mineral rock, iron ore, and charcoal. This is an elaborate process with designs ranging from simple and fine dots to rough lines traced with palms or fingers. Animal motifs such as the spotted plumage of the guinea fowl are common and one of the striking body painting designs they do. Both men and women practice this symbolic and ornamental expression as a way to appear more attractive and for ceremonial occasions. The Nyagatam number approximately 30,000 with populations in both South Sudan and Ethiopia. Many Nyagatum are nomadic pastoralists residing in semi-permanent livestock villages that will migrate several times a year. Heavy necklaces and richly decorated long goatskin skirts are worn by the women. Necklaces were traditionally made from dried seeds but have been replaced by colorful glass beads from Kenya. The Nyagatum women wear multiple layers of different beads on their necks which they never take off. A young girl will get her first strand of beads as a gift from her father and for each year of her life she will add more. It is not unusual to see a woman wearing up to 15 pounds of beads around her neck. The skirt of an unmarried woman is made of goatskin and it will always be embroidered with bright beads. A married woman's skirt is always a darker tone and not embroidered with beads and since she is older, the number of layers of beads on her neck will be higher. New roads built by the Chinese has resulted in a growing tourism industry, which is beneficial to the tribes by payments they receive for photography. They use these funds to buy food and automatic weapons to protect their livestock. Recent nearby wars, such as in Sudan, has created this easy access to guns which has resulted in a weakened tribal hierarchy to resolve conflicts. Through all of the changes that modern times have brought, not much has changed in this world, often referred to as a living museum.